Hey, how's it going everyone? It's Lee Halliday, and in this video we're going to talk about how I manage state in React. And to start, we're going to divide our state into two different categories, app state and external data. So app state are things that your app is sort of managing itself, uh, maybe input from the user or uh, something the user's toggled, etc. And then we've got external data, which is loading data from an API, a REST API, a GraphQL API, etc. So in terms of app state, we're basically going to try to follow this rule to keep state as low as possible. And we'll get into what that means in a second, but we're going to start with local state. And then we'll move on to how we lift state up and then how we convert that into global state with contexts. So let's get started with local state. So we're using Next.js, but we're not really using the full extent of Next.js. It's just to basically run this single component inside. I've already set up some imports that we'll dive into a little bit later as we need them, but we've got one single component called home that right now renders home sweet home. Thank you to Quest Forms for partnering with me on this video. Quest Forms is a developer focused form service ideal for web agencies, and they've just come out with V2 of their product, which comes with a 93% reduction in script size, making it lightning fast. As I've been using it, I've grown to love the documentation. From their getting started guide, into advanced topics such as repeated fields, they provide you an example of what it will look like, along with the HTML that you can copy and paste into your own application. For a limited time, Quest Forms is giving 50% off any annual plan for one year if you use the coupon LEE50 that I'll link to below in the description. So thanks again to Quest Forms. Head on over to quest.io and check them out. So in here, we're going to put a, a component called the country picker. And that doesn't exist yet, so we'll just create this below, country picker. And what this is going to do is return uh, a select that has a couple options in it. So option one will be for Canada, and option two will be for Colombia, like this. So if I were to go to the web right now, we've got this beautiful country picker, but we're not saving what the user has selected anywhere. So here's where we've got some app state and we wanna store it locally, as close to the component that actually needs it as possible. So we are going to be using the use state hook for this, which just comes from, from React. And we'll say country and set country is equal to use state. And we'll start it out with Canada. Then we need to use this state. So we'll say the value is the country and on change, we'll receive the event and we'll say set country is equal to the event dot target dot that targets value. So that will basically pick up which one the user has selected. So if I come back, I'm picking Canada, Colombia, et cetera, but we're not really doing anything with it yet. So what I wanna do is create another component called country details like this, and we'll create this down here, country details. And it's going to return, let's just say an H1 tag that says the uh, country. But here's our problem. So maybe we should swap these around, right? Perfect. The problem is that our state lives within this component, but we need that same state in another component. So we need to find a way to pass it from one to another, but you can't really do that with siblings. Uh, so what we can do is lift the state up. So that would be step number two. You've started locally within a component. You need it shared now amongst other components. So we're going to lift that up. So we're going to lift this into our home component, the parent of those. But now we need to pass that data down to the components. So we need to pass down the country and the setter, the set country. And this one, oh, sorry, that one, just needed the country like that. And this one, the picker needed both the, the getter and the setter. So country picker, we've got country and set country coming in as props and the country details, we will have just the country, the display. So we can update this like so. And maybe it makes sense to swap these around as well, just so that they're in the same order we're using them. So we'll come back 
I pick Columbia, I pick Canada, and it's updating correctly, even though these two components are siblings, by lifting the state up and passing it down as props, we fix that issue of how to share state. But now let's say we want to introduce more levels between these. And you want to avoid, because it's a little bit annoying, passing the state from, as, from prop to prop to prop to prop. Sort of, they call it state drilling or prop drilling, I think. Basically, you're drilling down the prop from the top to the bottom. And that's fine if you have one level, maybe two levels. But as soon as you get to sort of n number of levels, you don't know how many, it can get a bit annoying and a little bit hard to refactor. So what we want to do is convert this lifted state into global state. And we're going to do that by using uh, context in React. So we're going to start off by creating um, a context. So we'll call this the country context. And that will be equal to create context. And we'll give it no, um, no initial value. And what a context allows you to do is basically you store the state at the top of your application, but then any child below it can reach up and grab it from the parent without it having to be passed down through prop drilling from one component to the next. So what we'll do is we will create another component called the country provider. And in here, we will um, return country context dot provider, just like this. So a provider always needs a value. And this is basically the state of the provider, um, what you're going to provide to anything that ends up being below it. So what are we going to provide as our state? We're going to take this state here, the country, put it into our provider, and we're going to pass down country and set country. And what is this provider going to wrap around? Sort of anything, really. It's going to wrap around children. We'll see how it's used in a, in a second, and hopefully that will make a little bit more sense. So this component is going to receive some children. It's going to wrap this country context provider with this value around those children. So why don't we start to use it? We're going to get rid of this for now. We'll just comment this out. And what our home component is going to do is to return the country provider. And what is it going to wrap around? What is going to arrive as the children? We'll just create something called the home page, or maybe even the home content, like that. So this component doesn't exist yet, so why don't we create it? Function home content. And it will be returning this stuff like that. So we've got the country provider wrapping around the home content, this right here. And the country provider is receiving home content as a child, that it's, it's wrapping the context provider around and providing this value to it. So we need to do a little bit more refactoring. Uh, we no longer have access to the country here or the country and the set country here. So how are we going to get that data into the components that need it? What we're going to do is use a hook called use context. So what we can do is just go into the component that needs some value from the context provider and we can say, const this one needs country and it's going to get it from use context hook which context are we going to grab it from from the country context like this and we're not receiving a prop anymore so we'll get rid of this so now we'll take this same idea go down to the country picker that used to require receiving these two things as props but now it's going to receive those from the context provider so if we were to go back and look at our website, it should act the exact same way. Exactly. But we no longer have to pass props down from the parent to the child. We can just sort of reach up to the context and grab them. So one thing you typically want to do, see this component that's nested directly inside of the provider? What would happen is every time this value changes within the provider, 
So every time it re-renders this component, it's always going to re-render home content, whether or not um, it needs to, because maybe nothing has changed here at this level and it's changed somewhere else lower down. So you might end up with performance issues because this is constantly re-rendering. So what we can do is basically convert this into a memoized component so that it will only change if the props change that are being passed to it. And because no props are being passed, it will essentially never re-render unless state actually changes that needs to. So what we'll do is we'll just change this to const home content is equal to an arrow function. So same thing, just an arrow function. But what we'll do now is wrap memo around this, which has been imported from React, so that we've now memoized this component and it won't have unnecessary re-renders um, because it's, it's the first child nested within a context provider. So that's something you typically always want to do when you're creating your own providers. Let's make sure it still works. So Canada, Colombia, perfect. So we've basically taken care of app state. We've started local, we've lifted it up, we've converted it to global state using a context provider. We built our own from scratch. And at this point, this is where you have to decide. Um, you've got global state, you're welcome to, to keep using it. Like there's, there's no harm using use, use state, use reducer, use context. But at this point, you may want to think about, am I going to use Mobax, Redux, Overmind, Zeus stand, recoil, et cetera. There's a ton of great global state um, management systems out there. So use the one that you feel the most comfortable with. It doesn't really matter. Use whatever you're most productive with. But now let's talk about external data. So typically I don't like to store um, data that's coming from outside of my system. So data that's coming from a REST API, a GraphQL API. I don't like to store that in state and manage it myself. It's pretty complicated. There's loading states, error states, the actual data you've loaded. When do you trigger updates to that state? There's caching issues. There's a whole bunch of um, complicated problems to deal with that there's some very, li very good libraries out there that have done this for us. So I love React Query and SWR. Typically I prefer these when I'm dealing with REST or if I'm working with um, with GraphQL, I would use Apollo Client or maybe Urkel for dealing with uh, GraphQL data. So what we're going to do in this video is just use React Query to pull some details down about the country that has been chosen. So I have already imported uh, the Use Query hook from React Query. And what we're going to be, do is, be doing is using this uh, API here, restcountries.eu, where we can grab details about Canada or Colombia or whoever. So I'm just going to copy this into the code and we're going to use it down here in country details. So I'll just paste this as a comment for now. Okay, so we're going to use use query. And the way use query works is we first have to pass in a key. So our key for this is going to be country. And basically what the key does is, is say anytime this key changes, is when you should go and fetch new data because it's now invalid and we need refresh data. So whenever the country changes that the user has selected, which is coming from our global context, go and fetch some additional data. So we're going to, as the second parameter, basically you have to provide a function that goes and makes that request to load the external data. So we're going to create a function called fetch country. So we'll go create this right here. It's going to be an async function called fetch country that receives the country as the parameter, as the argument. So basically whatever your key is, and you can have multiple keys, you can have them as an array of keys, it doesn't matter. Those are going to be passed in as the first, second, third argument to this function here. So we're just going to use fetch. So we'll say response is equal to fetch data from this endpoint here clean that up and we'll just swap out CA to be whatever country the user has selected from the response we'll get the data so we'll say oops await right and we want to await the response being converted into JSON and then we'll just return the data 
So you don't need to put it into a variable. You could have just said return here. I like to do this just to be clear about what's being returned for the next programmer that's looking at this code. So we've set up use query hook OK, but what it's giving us are a few different things. It's giving us data, a Boolean called is loading, and error in case there was an error on the result from use query. So what we can just do here is we can say if is loading, uh, just return a span that says loading. If there was an error, we will return a span that says oops, error occurred. And that means if we get to this point, we know that we have data. So what we can do is maybe wrap this inside of a div. Let prettier clean it up for me. And below our h1, we are going to put into pre the data that returned from our uh, external API. So we're just going to say json dot uh, stringify the data uh, no replacer format with two spaces. Save that. So now when we come back, we've got um, the data for that country. So now it's a little bit weird to have this selector below. Let's just swap those once more. There we go. So you pick Columbia, and then you've got Columbia and the data below. Go back to Canada, Canada and the data below. So what we've done is we've used a combination of our app state, which is basically what the user has selected from the select, along with use query to load some external data, which takes care of all of our different loading scenarios, error scenarios, and it gives the data. Doing that on our own is a bit of a nightmare, so use good tools that handle it for you. And then we can just render out the result. So that's what I wanted to cover. This is how I manage state within a React application. I hope you enjoyed the video. Take care. Bye.